It's Shark Week at Black Magic Craft. I had a lot of fun making my tropical river raft recently, and I was really inspired when I tried to make a new style of wargaming runes in one of the last few videos. So I figured why not combine the two things and make some underwater ruins? It's not something you see too often. I still had some half inch thick foam blanks left over from my last ruins, which would be a great starting point for the walls. I grabbed my collection of foam rollers from Shifting Lands and tried to see which would have the most appropriate pattern for an ancient underwater city. I really wanted to spend the majority of my time on this build doing fun accent stuff and not drawing in tens of thousands of grout lines. I settled on a large field stone pattern and then moved on to thinking about the shape of the structure. Things can look a lot more interesting with some arches and open spaces to pass through. I grabbed my arch jig, again from Shifting Lands, and drew out three large arches on one of my pieces, then proceeded to texture the foam with the roller. I went ahead and textured a bunch of pieces of foam on both sides, but I didn't bother to trace the arches on these ones. I wanted to see if I could get away with a much more efficient approach of stacking all the walls, putting the stenciled one on top, and then cutting out all the arches at the same time. To avoid them moving around, I used a couple push pins to hold everything together and jumped over to the proxon for some cutting. I did this slowly and I did it freehand, knowing I was making ruins and that I was using a pretty haphazard stone pattern. If this had been for some polished building with precise brickwork, setting up a jig probably would have been worthwhile, but it really wasn't necessary here. I'm sure some of you are wondering, well, wouldn't it make more sense to cut these arches out of a thick piece of foam before milling them down into the half inch thicknesses and then, you know, stacking them back together to cut them? Sure, that, that works, part of it in theory, kind of. This way I have all of the layers pre-textured with the roller. Now, if I cut the arches out, then slice the walls, I'd have to run the roller over pieces with the arches already cut out, which I'm gonna say would work really poorly. One other issue that needs to be resolved is the stone pattern meeting up from side to side around the openings. This process is a bit tedious, but it's a very important thing to deal with to make the entire piece look more believable.
right, as I get this build ready to prime, I wanna take a second to tell you about the sponsor that made it possible. Arch Villain Games provides monthly collections of big, badass enemy models for your tabletop games. This month's theme is perfect for all of us 80s babies that grew up watching Street Sharks. It's got everything you need to run a high stakes underwater adventure. If you're not a gamer, a lot of these sculpts are incredible for display painting and are loaded with detail and interesting elements. By joining their Patreon, you get monthly bundles of themed models that you can print at home. Everything has a pre-supported file option, making it as simple as can be. But I've heard what some of you have been saying. These models are amazing, but I don't have a printer. Can't I just buy the models? For the longest time, the answer was no, but that has changed. I'm excited to announce that Archvillain has teamed up with Only Games to provide physical versions of these models. You can now buy the models individually or subscribe to get them sent to you in a variety of different monthly bundles. They come with all the dirty work and cleanup of 3D printing done for you. They're clean and ready to handle. If you wanna join their Patreon to get the models to print yourself, I'll put a link in the description, but there will also be a link to where you can get these physical models. How cool is that? Now let's prime. This piece has too many hard to reach places and it would be impossible to spray paint it safely and avoid melting. Instead, I used an airbrush primer to get into all those hard to reach places. I then jumped into a white ink to Zenithal highlight so I could go to town coloring this piece with acrylic inks. I've been finding myself using inks far more than paints. The colors are so much richer. They're often translucent, allowing highlights to show through, making painting light sources simpler. And they're thin enough to use in an airbrush right out of the bottle. I love them. This ease of use motivates me to get more experimental with my colors as well. I wanted this piece to have a fun underwater feel, so I used a mix of purples, magentas, and neon yellow to give it a really wonderful Masters of the Universe look. I wanted the shark statue to really stand out and look like it was made out of some sort of precious stone. So I painted it a really vibrant green with a bit of yellow highlighting to try to give it a jade-like appearance. And you'll notice that I didn't paint the bases. That's because the sculpt mold that I put on them was simply to provide an underlying shape for this stage here, the grout. I used pre-mixed acrylic grout in a linen color to create the sand. This stuff is amazing to work with. It's really easy to apply. It's very sticky, so it adheres to everything well. It dries fast and it dries hard. But I ran into a problem that I didn't anticipate. Something in the grout reactivated the acrylic ink, causing colors to blend into the sand, which was not good. We don't want purple sand. Thankfully, I had done the smaller piece first, which meant I could prevent this on the larger one by applying a quick clear coat to seal in all the inks. After that, it worked great. My tip for working with this stuff is that you should wear gloves so that it's easier to wash up afterwards and roughly apply it to your entire surface. Once you have everything covered, use a bit of water on your fingers to smooth things out. For sand, you want it pretty darn smooth. While it's curing and still soft and tacky, you can place in your fun decorative elements. I ordered myself a bunch of neat items to use on this project, and this was the part I was most excited about. I got some aquarium plants as well as some very small seashells from Amazon. I'll put a link to them in the description because they are a great hobby investment. The grout looks good as is for a sandy beach, but because I wanted this to look like it's underwater or just risen from the water, I decided to hit it with some raw umber ink to darken it a little bit to make it look more wet. This also gave me a chance to give a light filter to all of the shells, plastic plants, and seaweed elements that I had added uh, to kind of tone down the fakeness of the plastic parts and make everything a bit more cohesive. I also used some darker green ink to add some shadows and algae areas to the stonework. And I attached my statue and used some dirty down moss from Goblin's Hut to give another layer of algae to everything. The very final touch was putting a few more shells in place that wouldn't be tinted with the ink just to make them stand out a bit. Overall, I love this piece. I'm not sure how much use I'll get out of it, but it was really fun to make. 
I liked making the arched wall sections. I, I love how cutting the structure at a weird angle makes it really look like it's sinking into the sand. The colors were a blast to apply, but most of all, I love all the little aquatic elements that I was able to add at the end. These types of details are one of the most exciting parts of the hobby for me, and I'm always pumped to find new tiny bits to use. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give the video a like and a comment if you did. If you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe so you can catch my future builds. If you want to buy some hobby supplies and support the channel in the process, check out blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have an essential equipment list with affiliate links to the products that I use and using those links helps fund the production of these videos. Last, if you really love the content I make, the best way you can help me keep making it is by supporting Black Magic Craft on Patreon. Cheers, see you next time.